Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Today in Russia, an Mi-28 helicopter crashed in central Russia. Uh, it was caused by a technical failure. That's according to the, uh, the pilot of the plane there who survived the crash. Unfortunately, uh, his, uh, the, the, the crew captain, I believe it was, it did not survive. This was in an air show in central Russia. It says a technical failure was the cause of the crash. This is on TASS, Russian news agency of the uh, uh, Mi-28N helicopter at the uh, Dubrovici Aviation Range in Razan region in Central Russia. Air Force Chief Colonel General Viktor Bondarov said on Sunday, today during the performance of the training flight by the Berkerot Aerobatic Group, a control system failed aboard the Mi-28 helicopter, triggering an alarm about the failure of the second hydraulic system and a voice information hydraulic system failure. He said, the Mi-28 helicopter crashed when the Burkut aerobatic team was performing demonstration flights at the Dubra, uh, Dubra, excuse me, Dubrovniki aviation range in Razan region. The helicopter went into a flat spin when performing an aerobatic program and made a crash landing. Eyewitnesses said the helicopter's tail rotor had failed as it was performing an aerobatic element. Uh, it goes on to say that the Mi-28 pilots were struggling to save the aircraft to the, to the very last minute. Uh, Bondarev said, uh, regrettably, the crew commander died when the helicopter hit the ground. The other pilot has survived. Uh, he said the crash had been caused by a technical failure. We can actually see uh, in the video footage uh, when the, the, the helicopter is already engulfed in flames, but he does come out uh, and, and able to go on his own accord. A uh, very sad thing to see that happens there in Russia today. And another news article here that is on uh, RT News, uh, and, but it doesn't originate with RT News. It originates with a Czech uh, news uh, agency in the Czech Republic where we are right now. Uh, this is an interview that was conducted uh, by the president, uh, Zeman. And uh, the, the title of the article here is Migrant Flow to Europe as a Result of U.S.-EU Military Ops in the Middle East, says the Czech president. Uh, he says here, the flow of the immigrants to Europe stems from the Western state's military intervention in Iraq, Libya, and Syria, which have contributed to the emergence of terrorist groups in the Middle East, Czech uh, President uh, Milos Zeman told local media. The current wave of migration to Europe is rooted in the crazy U.S. idea to launch an intervention in Iraq, which allegedly had weapons of mass destruction, he says. But nothing was found. Uh, Zeman said in a, in a video interview with the Czech Republic Blessed newspaper published on Sunday. On top of this, the U.S. desire to restore order in Libya and Syria only resulted in the escalation of the conflict in both uh, countries and the emergence of terrorist organizations prompting people to flee the area, Zeman said. He added that not only the U.S. was to blame for the migrant chaos, but its Western allies had helped to coordinate operations in Libya as well. It's kind of interesting in another broadcast that we saw about this uh, similar situation here in the Czech Republic, uh, Zeman says he never invited all the Arabs that are coming to the Czech Republic. But then again, the Prime Minister of the Czech Republic uh, went against the President in his statement saying that they are welcome. Uh, nonetheless, it is certainly uh, makes the country more volatile for more terrorist activities as other countries such as France and, and, uh, and, and Germany and elsewhere in England that have faced similar terrorist attacks as a result of higher uh, Arabic populations that retaliate against the slightest thing spoken against Muhammad the prophet, or at least their prophet, I should say. Anyway, though, article is very interesting. You might want to catch that on our Facebook Israeli News Live page there where we post these articles at. And also, I uh, think Brother Chris, he sent me an article here on FARS News, and this was very alarming here, the one that he sent me uh, uh, today. It was uh, one of the, one of the uh, articles here is the Saudi, uh, Saudi DM threatens to occupy Kuwait. And uh, that article there came very interesting here uh, because after the U.S. coalition 
working with the Saudi government that, that liberated Kuwait. Now the Saudi government is threatening to take Kuwait themselves. Mohammed bin Salam threatened that his country would attack and occupy Kuwait, claiming that not only Kafti uh, uh, oil field, but also the entire Kuwait is part of the Saudi territories based on historical documents. Well, that's what Israel is doing in case anybody hasn't noticed. It is uh, the a Jewish state is based on historical documentation. In fact, the Bible very clearly lets us know that. Um, anyway, though, he says the Middle East pan uh, panorama quoted intelligence sources of the Persian Gulf Arab uh, literal states as saying Kuwait has complained that the continued shutdown of the coffee oil fields it shares with Saudi Arabia will, will incur huge losses uh, Riyadh must compensate for in the future. Kuwaiti oil minister uh, Ali uh, al-Omar in a letter to his Saudi counterpart al Ali al-Naim urged him to take adequate measures to resume production at coffee. By keeping production and export shut, Kuwaiti will incur huge losses which will be become by the Saudi, excuse me, be borne by the Saudi government for violation of the 50-year agreement and the 2010 operations agreement. The sources referred to Solomon's harsh reaction to Kuwait's claims and quoted him as saying that we saved Kuwait from Saddam's claws and now who is there to free it from our claws, he states. Kuwait has no superiority over us and countries stretched over a piece of land one-fourth of Riyadh, he added, according to the, to the sources. The field has been shut since October last year for non-compliance with the Saudi environmental standards. It is operated by al Kafi Joint Operations, uh, the co a joint venture between AGOC and su subsidiary of state firm of Saudi um, Aramaco of Kuwait Gulf Oil Company. Anyway, interesting how these threats just kind of pile up there. Also, the political analyst on FARS news agencies warns to imminent uprising against the Palestinian Authority. Uh, the Palestinian Authority is, is prosecuting the Palestinian revolutionaries with the framework of its security cooperation pact with the occupying regime, uh, as they call it, which is, they're saying that's Israel. But it should be said that the Palestinian nation will not keep silent in the Israeli crimes forever. Palestinian researcher Bassam Rajah told FNA on Sunday, reiterating that a revolution against the Palestinian Authority and a new intifada against Israel will soon take place. He pointed to the burning of the death of the Palestinian infant by Israeli settlers in Nablus and said that Nablus crime is not any crime uh, crime by the child killer Zionist regime. It is a 67 year, 67 year now that the Zionists have been engaged in genocide against the Palestinians in its effort to wipe them off the history and memories. Might add those that are not aware of it, there were no such thing as Palestinians to start with. But nonetheless, we do not condone the killing of any person whatsoever, especially a child that was, that was murdered this way here. But it's kind of interesting how that uh, Ban Ki-moon came out against Israel as a result of this, and yet there is no proof that there was an Israeli involved in the murder to begin with. Could very well have been a member of ISIS that carried out the attack and yet blame it on the Jews as usual, only to gain more sympathy. But it is a shame to say the least, that this child suffered the way he did and died the way he did. That, our condolences do go out, and we don't support any violence such as this against the, the, the people, the Arabic peoples that are living in the land of Israel today. So, but nonetheless, do we see the same condolences from the Palestinian side when it comes to the death and murder of the Jewish children? Not at all. In fact, if anything, you see celebrations, even by the government itself and Hamas leadership, all celebrate the death of Israeli children, whereas we do not celebrate the death of an Arabic child. It is a child, nonetheless. In the sight of God, it is still a child. And so, therefore, we do not condone any attacks. But the question is, is who really did do it? So before we go to blaming the Jewish people, you need to find out for a fact who did it. Uh, Anyway, so we go on and move on to uh, one last news bit here, and that is the, the, uh, the Haredi Jewish man who stabbed the six people in the gay parade in Jerusalem, the 13th annual gay parade. Uh, one of the victims, a young 16-year-old woman, has died as a result of her injuries. And that is a very sad thing indeed to, uh, to hear as well. Again, we do not condone murderous acts whatsoever 
Uh, we do not condone a gay parade to be done in the city of Jerusalem to begin with, a holy city where it should not be permitted, but that is the government authorities that have permitted such, and therefore that is in the hands of God. That is not something that we can deal with ourselves. And so therefore it was certainly completely wrong, especially for a 16-year-old girl, a child yet, to be murdered in such a fashion. Perhaps living a life before them in the humbleness and simplicity of the gospel of Yeshua may have actually changed the way the people think and believe in the first place. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom. Good